Hi, and welcome to Squiz.com, the connected marketplace. For this episode 5, I'll be showing you the latest changes we've made to the platform in the past few weeks. During this time, we've added a new feature that allows you to introduce your contacts to each other, if they haven't already connected with each other on the platform. This is a great way to network and facilitate people finding each other, which can be helpful where you have invited a new person into the platform and they don't have any contacts yet. Or it could be useful if you wish to assemble a team or a group of people in the platform and simply allow two people to connect that you think uh, should know each other. To show you this in action, I've got Abu who's logged into the platform here. And Abu has uh, several connections to different people. So he's connected to the home Simpson and he's connected to Clancy Wiggum. Now he may email Homer to connect with Clancy if they're already not connected, maybe because they were in a conversation that day or they have the same interests. So the way this would work is Abu would then go into one or the other person and click on this new link that appears called Introduce. Now the second step is he wants Homer be introduced to Clancy. So he simply types in Clancy's name, selects Clancy from the drop down. Now Abu, when he sends this introduction, he can also show a message that both will see and this message may contain information about how these two people may know each other or why they should connect together. So for example, Abu may type in the message, Hi Homer and Clancy, after our conversation in the store today, you might like to connect with each other. So both people, both Clancy and Homer, will see this message being sent from Abu. So the final step is just to then send the introduction. Now the platform is saying that the introduction has successfully been sent to each of those people. Now they both have to accept this introduction before they will both become contacts of each other. So if we go into a separate browser, so Homer will see a notification. So in this case, we've got one new notification under the contacts category. So Homer will see a notification saying that he would like to connect. And if we click on the contacts uh, menu, he can see that there has been this request or this introduction for uh, that Abu was sending so that way he can connect with Clancy. So Homer can read that message that was sent. And then if he accepts this request, uh, then he's going to choose to assign Clancy to one of the groups that he has assigned. So he might just set up Clancy as being an, an acquaintance. And then he can approve the request. So if he clicks approve, now because Clancy hasn't approved the introduction from his side yet, uh, Clancy won't automatically become a contact of Homer's. Both Homer and Clancy need to accept this introduction. So if we do the same for Clancy, if we click on the contacts menu and then he can then choose to uh, accept or decline this request. So he might do the same and he might say, well, uh, Homer may be a, a friend because he knows him and he wants to put him into the friends group. So Clancy then approves this request. Now, because both people approved it, they will now appear on each other's lists. So if we go back and open up the contacts menu, you can see that Homer is now a contacts and vice versa. In Homer's contacts list, Clancy is now uh, listed there. Now, because these, these people are both connected, then they can then start creating messages and communicating with each other. Now, if one of them didn't accept the decline the request, then the other person would not be able to accept it, and that would be the end of the introduction. Now, the last part is Abu will also receive a notification advising of the result of that introduction. So, in this case, he gets a notification saying that both Homer and Clancy are now connected. Now, if one of them had declined the introduction, then he would receive a notification saying who declined that in introduction as well. So it allows him to be informed about what the result of his introduction came to. Homer may not want Abu to be able to send him introduction. So within the platform, Homer can go into his data sharing policies and he can choose whether or not to allow introductions to take place for a group of his contacts. So there's a new permission that's been added called allow contact introductions. So if we go back and look at Abu, so he's currently assigned to unassigned people. So you might want to assign that to say a friends group. And then if we go into select the friends group, we can see that that group is set to the share all my personal data policy. So if we then go into that data sharing policy, which is this one, Homer is saying that any people assigned to this policy, so in this case, Abu is assigned to it through that friends group, 
that Abu is allowed to send introductions. So if Homer didn't want that, he could change this permission set to no, then all people assigned to this friends group uh, would not be allowed to send him introductions. So this is a way Homer can stop introductions being made by people that he doesn't want to allow. And the same goes for every other person that exists on the platform. So that gives you a quick overview of introductions and how easy it is to get more of your contacts to connect with each other. So Homer, for instance, may want to then send uh, introductions between Abu and Clancy or any other contacts that he has. And this allows people to find and connect with each other easily based on other relationships that exist within the platform. So a typical case could be for if you wanted to set up a team within Squiz, then you could invite several people into the platform and then once they all connect to you, you could then send an introduction to each of the team members and then they can then connect and find each other and start communicating within the platform easily. So this is a good feature for teams, for any kind of groups of people that need to find each other quickly and easily and it could be relevant for business circles, it could be relevant for family uh, or any of your contacts that you wish to connect with each other. The next feature we've added to the platform is that when notifications are raised within the platform, uh, such as where you see these yellow or black circles appearing, uh, that a noise can be played when a new notification comes in. So that sounds like this, and that indicates to you that you have a new notification that is there for you to look at. So you can control these, these sounds, whether you're not, you want these to play or not, by going into the personal options menu, click on the settings option. Two new settings have been added called play sound for new notifications and play sound for new conversation messages. So for those yellow and black circles that we had, the notifications, you can set, if you don't want a sound to play when you, you receive a new notification, you can change that setting to no. And it's the same for conversation. So if you had a conversation open and a new message appeared within that conversation, it will play a the notification sound as well. So you can disable that with these settings. So using this feature, you can have the Squiz platform open in the background. And when you hear this, notification sound, then you know that there is something for you to look at. The next new feature we've added is the ability when people post new messages within a conversation to have all the notifications of those new messages grouped together. So for example, if Homer was to open a conversation with this one called conversation 10, then if he decided to put in multiple messages, uh, so let's just put in some uh, test uh, content here. So he's posted one new message, no, Clancy, because he's in this conversation, will re receive a new notification. If Homer creates multiple messages, then what previously would happen is Clancy would have seen, uh, in this case, three new messages have been posted up. So he would see three separate notifications. Now what we've made a change to the platform here is that now Clancy will see, uh, when we look at his notifications, he will see now that a person, in this case Homer, has posted three times as opposed to seeing three separate notifications. So this is a nice and neat improvement so that way you're not getting a lot of notifications when posting content within conversations. So you can see here uh, for Clancy, if Homer had posted 20 messages within a conversation, then Homer would only see one notification and he's not getting lost in all the all the notifications of that one conversation he can easily see all the different content that's displaying now the way that the platform works is once you've read this notification then it will send a new notification for any time new content has been created in that conversation so that's why we can see here in conversation 10 it's telling you about three new notifications whereas in you're seeing a, another notification for when a person is posted 20 times since you've last read your notifications when you'll see this grouping mechanism occur so this is a nice new improvement that we've added to the platform to try to reduce the amount of notifications that you're uh, seeing in the platform. Now the number that appears in the notifications for the conversations will be indicative of the amount of times a person or people have added new messages or any kind of um, activity to a conversation. So you can see here, it's telling me we've got three notifications, but, but all that is related to this one conversation called conversation 10. So you get to see the total count of activity and then when you open the notifications, you see the grouping of those counts. The other improvement we've made to conversations is so that the 
personal and organization notifications related to conversations is separated out. So let's take an example. Clancy here, so he's in this conversation called conversation 10. Now he may say, well, in this conversation, I'm acting as a person employed within the Springfield Police. So he can select uh, the Springfield Police organization that he's an employee of, that he's going to be posting as. Anytime he posts a message in the conversation, Springfield Police is going to appear under his name to know that he's acting as an employee of Springfield. Now, what happens if, if Homer or anyone else within the conversation creates a message the notification for Clancy is going to appear in the organization conversation notification. So let's see an example of this in action. So Homer will put in another test message. So he posts that message. Now because Clancy has signed that conversation to an organization, he no longer sees a yellow notification saying a personal notification he now sees it within the organization conversation notifications so this is a clear way that Clancy can see conversations that are happening related to his personal life which is in the yellow circle and conversations that are happening related to his professional life or his work life in the black circle so he can pick and choose which context or which category those conversation notifications appear in and this makes it nice in him to have clear separation between work and personal life. The final improvement we've made is with conversations as well. And previously there was a bug where if you had were opening the platform within the Firefox browser and clicked on the attachments and somebody had uploaded an attachment, previously if you could not click on the files to download those attachments. So now there's a bug fix in place to allow that to occur uh, within Firefox browsers. So that wraps up the latest changes. If you have any ideas for improvements or feedback, please post these on the feeds within the squiz.com profile by clicking on the profile link in the footer. Within the profile, click on the feeds area and place your improvements in within the Squiz Early Adopters feed. If you find a bug in the platform, you can fill out a bug form which is, can be found in the personal options by clicking on the report feedback or issue and click on the report a platform bug and fill out the details of that bug that you'll found. That's a wrap up of this release. Thanks for watching. Happy squeezing.